Hi everyone, my name's Adam and this is Friday Sews. Right, so this week I've been working on a few different things. Um, one of the things that I've been working on is the I Am Jax coat by I Am Patterns. Um, this was recommended um, by Hales Moore Sewing, who I will link below. Um, she did it in a really, really nice um, sort of raspberry pink uh, PUL, I believe it was. Um, I had some of the khaki green PUL, um, which is from Fabrics by Penny on Facebook group. Um, so I had a few issues with that. Uh, one of them was the finish on the hood edging. So I ended up um, putting a bind in on the hood. Um, and I also chose a few different cotton lycras to line it with. So it's got a striped sleeve inside, a plain khaki lining, and then it has a different stripe on the inside of the hood. Um, so the, the zip on this, um, I used some quilting tape to hold it into place because of the nature of the fabric, it is quite slippery. Um, so the placket as well, I ended up finishing the edge on it with my baby lock cover stitch, um, purely because the PUL was distorting on the normal machine. Um, that's my, my Benina 950 industry, it just wouldn't. Even with the Teflon foot on there, it just kept getting stuck. Um, I have got another batch of the PUL in a navy, which I do plan on making a second one for myself. Um, it's a really good pattern, really, really simple to follow. Um, it comes in a men's, a woman's, and I think it comes in like a, a set as well where you can buy all of the different patterns for the I Am Jax coat. Um, my other option is a quilted, sort of like a quilted ripstop fabric that I've got that one of my friends kindly gave me. And I have laid the pattern out and there is enough of that um, to make the coat out of that as well. So I'm tempted to start off with the quilted ripstop um, and make myself one out of that. So the other thing that I've been making this week is a um, wool flat cap. This is the Waves and Wild, but it was previously made by Jack's mum, um, Fell and Dale flat cap. I've made quite a few of these. This one is from a is from a khaki worsted wool um, with just a plain khaki. Um, cotton woven lining. Um, I've made quite a few of these as I say. Um, the one thing that I do recommend that if you are going to um, make this is the insert for the peak of the cap. I use a, I think it's a 250 GSM, um, oh what's it called? It is uh, acetate sheets. Um, which you can get on eBay and Amazon. Um, they come in. They come in a pack of about twelve sheets, I believe. Um, but they are basically just a clear flexi um, acetate, which is a bit like the sort of food packaging. You can basically just draw on the out the outline of the um, insert pattern piece. And then you, uh, if you draw it on with a sharpie, you can then just cut around it. But I do recommend that. I, I mean, as I say, I've made probably seven or eight, maybe even a few more of these, and the insert never seems to fit whenever I've done it. Um, so every single time I've had to trim down to narrow the width of the insert this way, um, and then I've had to trim off and taper the edges more as well. Um, so that is the Fellendale flat cap. Uh, the other thing that I've made this week is a couple more of these t-shirts. This is the Sinclair Teo t-shirt, um, which is a PDF only download, but you do get it in a US letter, an A4 uh, for the UK and Europe, or 
you can get it in the print shop um a zero and you can get it in projector file as well um sinclair patterns have got quite a few i think they've got about three or four patterns on their website now that are free one of them being the um sinclair cardigan um i've made that a few times and they are great patterns they're drafted like big four patterns um and i cannot recommend them enough every single pattern that i've used from them the size has been correct i haven't had to do any adjustments to them um so all of my t-shirts all of my polo tops i've all, i've got another polo that i did just finish um which is the the oliver knit polo this comes in multiple sleeve options i think you can have it in this is i believe this is the crop sleeve you can have it in a short sleeve um without a band with just a normal hem you can have it in a long sleeved you can have it in the collared option and you can also have it in a hooded option um the placket on the way that sinclair tell you to do the placket on the um oliver knit um polo is the easiest way that i've ever been sort of told by an instruction set how to do a placket because you literally put the facing on stitch your centre front seam in a very very narrow u shape and then you cut between the stitching and it all just sort of flips back inside itself and creates it's almost like how you would do a facing but it's just so much more simple than some of the other ways that other patterns tell you how to do um plackets for polo tops um this is a this um teo t-shirt is uh it was a bit of a scrap buster the dr zeus fabric i only could get it in half a meter because it was from a d stash um so it's a cotton lycra um and because obviously there wasn't enough depth in the fabric i basically stitched on a panel of navy contrast because there is navy in the print um so i cut i, cut, I think i cut about 10 inches of navy contrast and just literally overlocked it straight across the top of the width fabric of the Dr. Zeus fabric. So then when it came to laying out the t-shirt, I used the notches on the armholes um, to match up where the, um, the seam would be front and back so it didn't look odd. Um, so that was a really... It was it's something that I've not done before, but it was something that I'll definitely do again because I've got a couple more pieces of um, cotton lycra that are a little bit too short to get the full length of the body. Um, so just by putting a contrast panel on the front or the top to put like a like a long band on there, it is a good way of um, using up um, pieces of cotton lycra that you can't really fit because you haven't got the length for the pattern. Um, one of the other things that I finished this week was my Angela Kane Salvage Edge jeans. Um, I've made two pairs of these now. The first pair I made was a 28 waist um, and they were slightly too big, um, but luckily they fit my husband. So the second pair I made was in a 26 um, and that is these. So they these are the Angela, I believe the Angela Kane Salvage Edge jeans. Um, they're designed to use, the reason they're called the selvage edge jeans is because they're designed so that when you line up your inside seam, you put one side, you can cut both sides actually on the selvage so that you can use the edge of the selvage as sort of like decorative in, inside when you look at the sort of inside seam. Obviously, I didn't have enough to do the selvage on both, so I've overlocked all of the other pieces inside to stop them fraying um but you can get some really nice denims that have got a really good sort of decorative selvage inside so some of them have got like a red binding or a, a contrast color binding on the selvage um these are as i say these are the second pair that i've made uh the fabric this denim i got it's a 12 in uh, 12 ounce stretch denim um and this is from fabric land um and I believe it was seven, either six ninety nine or seven ninety nine a meter. 
I do recommend you pre-wash it a couple of times. The dye that comes out of it is insane. Um, and it also stains the inside of your washing machine. Um, so I would do a dark wash after washing your denim. Um, the zip for this was kindly gifted to me by my friend Michelle. Um, because I've run out of these little sort of five, six inch YKK um, metal teeth zips. Um, but th as I say, these are the second pair that I've made. I have another pair cut out that are in a, um, a needle cord fabric in sort of like a sort of brown khaki colour, which will be my next thing that I, one of my next things that I put together. So the inside of the jeans, you have your pockets and these are just made with a contrast blue pocket. Uh, the pair that I made before had a really, really nice sort of navy and white zigzag poly cotton, which I used, which is really nice because when you look inside the pocket from the outside on the other ones, you can see that there's a um, a contrast there. Um, as I say, all of these seams on the inside are overlocked to stop it from fraying. Um, and I would highly recommend doing that rather than a zigzag because the zigzag just doesn't seem to hold the... Um, the seam uh, that well, it doesn't seem to stop the seams from fraying as well um, as there is a few bits that you can't really do on the overlocker because of the how tight the curvature is on in between the seam allowances like right inside sort of in here where the crotch meets you can't overlock the corners um so this these that i've done the the belt loops on these are done on my cover stitch and being lazy I didn't change the thread on the belt loops so that they have got white stitching on the belt loops as opposed to the sort of goldy brown stitching that's on the rest of the jeans which is a Gutterman denim thread um, which again is from Fabrics by Penny um, Facebook group so these are the Gutterman denim threads this is the one in the middle is the one that i used for the top stitching on those jeans um they are brilliant threads for anything denim related um the pattern is quite straightforward the instructions aren't that great um for some of the things but there is tutorial videos links to their youtube channel um which show you how to do the fly uh, the fly front um installing the zip uh, and i believe i think there might be one on there as well that shows you how to do the flat felt seam um which is what the inside of these are they so these have all got flat felt seams on the inside seam of the legs uh the length on these is pretty good i believe it's about a 32 inch leg um and obviously it depends on how much you turn up to hem them. You, I've done a double fold um, on both of them, the same as you would with um, sort of ready to wear jeans. Um, but I did have to take off about an inch because they were slightly too long. But I'm really happy with them. I've worn them already um, and they fit really nicely. They're really comfortable, which is this needle cord here. So I will be making those up. Um, but as I say, this this is the one of the inserts, uh, one of the um, sort of seams that I was saying that you can't really get to on the overlocker because you've got the the dip in here, then it flicks back out again, so you can't get that shape into the overlocker. I mean, there may be a way of doing it, but I've not yet found how to. Um, so they will be one of the next things that I make. <laughs> 